Crypto kids, welcome back to another video today. Bitcoin, it's trying to hit the CME gap uh, closure and Bitcoin ever since the past few videos, we've been reversing perfectly. We fell down from the ascending triangle support. Then of course, Bitcoin broke down from the triple top neckline, which we discussed last night. And that was at $68,500 and following a breakdown from that neckline, we came down to initially 66.5 and we've reversed almost towards that CME gap. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing whether that 64.2K target is still realistic what am I personally looking to do with Bitcoin uh, positions or am I accumulating Bitcoin and at which prices will I be accumulating Bitcoin? On the daily time frame, we actually have some hopium and a potential trading setup. So I will be getting to that very, very shortly. We have some macro analysis to conduct as well. And of course, we'll go into Ethereum and what has been happening there. So stay tuned until the end of this update video. It's going to be pretty awesome. And if you remember uh, back over on uh, Friday, uh, we were discussing with Carl that a potential $6,000 Bitcoin dump could be happening on Monday. Unfortunately, we timed it just one day off. So it happened today. And that's because yesterday, a lot of banks in, in Europe were closed due to the Easter holidays. So now that they have opened up and we're seeing trading across the entire world, uh, the volume has shifted uh, towards the downside and we've caused the price to crash near the $64,000 level. But more importantly, the ETFs are going to be giving us an indication on whether this drop can continue down further to $61,000 or $59,000 potentially. And I prepared a very nice thesis on uh, why we should be a little bit concerned at this moment in time. But with that said, Let's jump straight into the four hourly time frame for Bitcoin and then we'll go into the ETFs and a little bit of macroeconomics. What is the first thing that I can see on this Bitcoin price chart? The first thing that I can see on the four hourly time frame is that we have a candle where there is clearly currently an ex exhaustion of sellers. So this candle will close within 13 minutes and 45 seconds. If we close as we are right now, then it's likely that Bitcoin can have a small dead cat bounce towards the upside which will be at 66.7K. But if we do not experience that dead cat bounce and we go to, to the prior resistance level or the current resistance level, uh, then we could continue dropping uh, towards the CME gap closure, which sits at $64,205. This is going to be fully dependent on what we see with the Bitcoin ETFs, because in summary, the ETFs uh, reported $85 million worth in outflows. And what we do know with the ETFs is that they're a lagging indicator. <laughs> Why? Because they report their buying and selling transaction data one or two days after it actually happens. So us having an $85 million loss means that on Thursday, ETF issuers had mostly sellers uh, that contributed to their market. Meaning that today, because we had a drop, uh, well, well, a consolidation over the weekend and a drop in price uh, that, that was occurring early this morning, we could be reporting significantly more um, gr or greater outflows, basically, uh, from the ETFs that would funnel uh, spot buyers or the derivatives traders more panic and therefore sell the price. Uh, and that could cause us to close the CME gap. And that's the kind of loop that, that we get stuck in every single time. It's probably going to be similar to what we experienced three weeks ago when Bitcoin topped out at $73,000 uh, and you know we had a futures market which was overheating the derivatives market was overheating we had a bearish divergence etc uh, we talked about that and called it perfectly but after we saw a small dip towards 69k the ETFs reported net outflows that caused panic in the market and that kind of continued on until we found a place in price where um, there was a lot of demand and that turned out to be at 60.6k. Uh, the market bottomed out and then we saw a reversal back towards the upside, which caused the ETFs to also start reporting inflows. I think this cycle will continue uh, until GPTC fleshes out all of their holdings. Of course, that's not going to go to zero, but it's going to get to a point where uh, the remainder GPTC holders have to keep their holdings because of huge capital gains taxes uh, that it wouldn't be uh, profitable for them to sacrifice that 1.5% management fee uh, for that capital gains tax, which they would be paying for. And until that point, I think this cycle will be continuing further on. Now, jumping into the daily time frame, I still think we do have some hopium for the market as we are forming a bullish pennant, the price is converging on the daily time frame. In terms of a position, I'm actually looking to take a long 
if Bitcoin hits the support at 63.2K. That would be the support line of this bullish pennant. But we need to be careful because this pattern can reverse on us pretty quickly if we confirm a double top pattern and we break below 62K with a confirmation. But I really do think that pennants should be taken, uh, like if you want a longer pennant, then the position to take is from the support of that bullish pennant and that would be here at 62K. I'm personally going to be taking this trade um, and the risk management, in my opinion, is pretty solid. Uh, the take profit would be at $90,000. If we continue higher than Maybe I'll change it to 95 or 100K, depending on how the market is in that particular time. Uh, but with a 2% stop loss and maybe a 2, 3X leverage, this could be an interesting trade to take in my opinion. Of course, nothing in this video is financial advice, just my personal analysis only. But if you would like to take a similar trade, then you can consider using Bitflex or Bybit, which you can get up to pretty good bonuses, uh, deposit and trading bonuses, if you use the links in the description down below. But yeah, I mean, I think this trade could have a good target of 90k until we break down below this neckline. I think that will become invalidated and potentially Bitcoin can continue dropping towards the downside. Um, but I really don't think that's a likely scenario. I think the final buy the dip opportunity is going to be at $59,000 to $61,000 uh, because, you know, we've had seven green consecutive candles back to back which has not happened ever since 2012. So it's normal that this month we have a red candle, but I think this you know drop will probably last until 61 to 59K. And then we continue rebounding uh, back up to uh, the uh, 90 or you know continue going into parabola. Because in the parabola cycles, we can see that if Bitcoin breaks down from 59K, then the parabola is going to be broken towards the downside. And that would not be great whatsoever. So until 59 holds, I'm bullish. And um, bouncing from 59K would suggest that we can enter the final leg of the parabola that can take us to that $90,000 territory. But the final piece of technical analysis I will share is this uh, resistance or support line now that has been created since 2015. And, um, you know, we mentioned so many months ago that if Bitcoin is to flip this line of resistance into support, then it would suggest that Bitcoin can surpass and create a new all time high, which is exactly what we did. Now we're trying to retest it and guess where the support is lying at $59,000. So I think that range between 59 to 61 K, if you want to get into Bitcoin, uh, if you think that it's too late to buy, I think that will be your final, final opportunity. But hey, please do your own research and your own analysis. This is just based off of my perspective on the charts. Let's go into Ethereum and then we'll jump into the breaking news. I think that Ethereum, I personally sold off all the Ethereum, which we bought together at the 2.1 to 2.2 K levels at 3.550 and 3950. So those are the two levels that I liquidated all of my Ethereum holdings. I think that Ethereum can reverse down to $3,000 because of the amount of FUD we have about the Ethereum spot ETF approvals. There's a huge chance that the ETFs do not get approved and this could cause us to crash down to $3,000 once again. But if we look on chain, we can see that huge amounts of demand for Ethereum lie down at $2,850. So I think those two levels could be potential targets for an Ethereum correction. And we can see that in terms of TA, that would be very, very good support uh, due to the multiple candles that have retested the 2850 level. Ladies and gents, that concludes our technical analysis. Now we can jump into the breaking news for crypto. The amount of liquidations that we experienced in the past 24 hours have been phenomenal. Uh, we've hit $161 million for Bitcoin and $113 million for Ethereum. Um, and we talked about the ETFs. The reality of the situation is ever since that we had the ETF launches, they've accumulated 212,000 Bitcoin, whereas only 74,000 Bitcoin have been issued uh, to the miners. And if this continues going on, then I think uh, we're on a very parabolic uptrend that will keep on continuing. Retail isn't even back. I mean, if we compare this cycle to the 2021 top, everybody in the world was talking about crypto. Twitter was flooded by Dogecoin. Elon was going on SNL talking about Dogecoin. Athletes were aping into NFTs. Like there was so much going on that is not happening now. Uh, and I think, um, you know, crypto still has a lot of momentum to be keeping on going towards the upside. The halving is going to be taking place in approximately 17 days. This can change, but uh, I think now it's guaranteed that it will be taking place in April. I think April is going to be a huge volatile month, but we know that the halving is bullish. Let's hope that Wall Street sees it the same way as well. 
this is a bit more this is an on-chain chart for the bears um bitcoin has entered the zone the blue zone where long-term holders are in huge profits and whenever we do enter this blue zone they tend to take some profits and the price tends to hit an all-time high. We know two cycles ago that was not the case until, uh, you know, we, we traded within that zone for like one year and then the price at an all-time high. So I don't think this is giving us a suggestion for a top, but it is telling us to be a little bit careful as the long-term holders for Bitcoin are starting to sell. But what we know from this chart is that long-term holders are, sell are selling, but until we see a curvature and a bottoming, bottoming out in the selling pressure, uh, Bitcoin will probably continue its momentum to hit new all-time highs. Short-term holders have started to go in an uptrend, uh, but until again that curves out into a topping pattern, um, I don't think that the bull market top will necessarily be official. But here we can see that compared to previous cycles, I think short-term buying pressure is so, so small, suggesting that retail is not yet back in terms of on-chain data. The final thing I want to cover is macroeconomics, like I promised. There is a huge, huge, huge negative correlation between uh, the, treasury, the treasury rates and Bitcoin. So what happens here is the price of Bitcoin has been decreasing because lately the dollar has been increasing in value. The reason for this is because of the 10-year um, yields for the treasuries in the United States. They've almost reached all-time high levels. And what we know is whenever that happens, the dollar tends to see an increase towards the upside. We're seeing a small bounce on Bitcoin because as you can notice on the past few hours, the dollar has just dropped off very small. But we know that the exact correlation between the 10-year treasury bonds and Bitcoin lies at a 90% accuracy rate which is huge, right? And because this affects the, D the Dixie, we can just assume that, okay, if the dollar decreases in value, then the price of Bitcoin will go towards the upside. That's the simplified rule. And those two are perfect, perfect indications of whether which way one is going. And I would definitely keep it in mind when you're trading Bitcoin to have a look at the Dixie and the treasury yields. So because the 10-year treasury yields, yields are high, it means that people are anticipating good like you know economic growth to continue but unfortunately that's not the truth as gold and silver are actually gold is at all-time highs but silver could, can soon hit an all-time high um, we know that people are switching to inflationary hedge goods to save themselves from the ongoing inflation i mean the stock market is hitting astronomical levels but the truth is people do not have money i mean if you compare credit card debt and uh inflation and goods and services between 2021 to today it's at like stupendous levels where people compared to 2021 don't have the same amount of money. So them not having the same amount of money means that they do not have enough cash and disposal to be investing into goods such as crypto or the stock market. I think it's institutions pumping the stock market. I spoke about this before, but because it's not the same economic um, economic stance we have across, across the world globally, uh, I think another reason for retail not coming back yet is because they simply do not have enough money to inject into, into cryptocurrencies. But that will change. That will change one day, maybe within the next year or two years. But now that Bitcoin has become an institutional asset, it's been accept accepted in the trade fine space. I really do think so that even if retail doesn't push the price higher, Bitcoin will increase just because there's so much inflation and because the dollar and the macro trend will go towards the downside. Before I end off, I want to look at three different things very quickly. This is super important. So if we're expecting a recession within the next one or two years, we need to compare it with 2008. So what happened in 2008? The stock market was rallying to astronomical levels. But the difference is, while the stock market was rallying, um, the amount of spending from the government was super, super low. So there was low economic stimuli from the government, but people still had money to be pumping into stocks, etc. If we compare it to now, uh, we're seeing huge amounts of all-time highs or you know parabolic all-time highs for the stock market, but the, uh, but the governments are spending money. So they're giving economic stimuli to an already pumping market meaning that we're incredibly overheated, uh, the people don't have money, and the new printed money that's coming in to then pump the stock market within six or nine months down the line, it's going to be very, very negative and create a huge negative impact. And I think it will increase the likelihood of a greater recession. So if that does happen, then I would be looking to buy the dip for Bitcoin. Um, you know, people ask, okay, what would a recession do to the price of Bitcoin? I think in the short term, because no one will have money, it will cause a significant dip towards the downside, including institutions, because institutions go into the negative as well. 
Uh, but Bitcoin and gold will probably be the, the quickest assets to recover after a recession. So having capital is sometimes good just to buy the dip in the off chance or in the likely chance that we experience a significant correction towards the downside within the next two years. And the truth is, right, there's a huge gap in wealth in the United States. Approximately 1% of American, Americans control 30% of the total wealth in the country. That is yet again another huge indication for a potential recession to be coming up. And, you know, if we look at how a business, how a bank or how a country becomes bankrupt or goes default, uh, gradually, you know, they can build up debt, they can print new money. But soon that will go up into a vertical line. And eventually, when you have so much national debt and you have so much interest piled up and your GDP is at a huge deficit and you cannot pay back those interests, then uh, your currency will default eventually. And that should, in theory, uh, within the next two years or so, cause the dollar to lose a lot of value. And then Bitcoin against the dollar uh, could maybe even hit $1 million. That's how the $1 million Bitcoin is actually possible. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, smash up the like button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I'll be seeing you all very soon on the next video. Take care, everyone, and bye-bye.